Finally, I'm coming with a very precise machine learning model that I train to detect who is the real MG and who is the cloned version. Listen, you already tried this before in computer vision with the AutoML video. I, I don't understand why you're doing this. Like, what is this time, purpose? no, no, listen, this time is totally different. This model is very accurate. I checked the performance metrics a couple of times and I'm doing to do this to stop you calling me the cloned version. Everyone gonna see it now. Is it running now on your computer? Yes. Check this out. Beauty. You see that? Wait a second. Listen, there's nothing to wait and there's nothing to negotiate. Like everything is obvious and I tried. Run you your model it? again. Run it. You're run gonna question model. again my machine learning model solution. No, I'm not going to run it again. You're gonna come with some hypothesis. No, just run your model again. Do it. Okay. What is going on? That's a very good question, my friend. Although your model is precise, but it has learned something which is not supposed to learn. And it, it is detecting the real MG from the shirt. This is why you have to always make sure your solution should be interpretable, even if your model performance metrics are pretty good. So you have to make sure your model is not learning something wrong instead of what it is supposed to learn as correct features, even for computer vision tasks. But when the model performance metrics are pretty good, how would I know my model has learned wrong or right features? Very good question. Shall we get hands on and check this out? Sure. Let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to another video which we are going to talk about how we can have an interpretable machine learning solution for computer vision tasks in a scalable manner. So we have to make sure the specific features of the image that my machine learning model is relying on to predict the final value is something that is supposed to be learned and the model is interpreting the, the given image uh, in a proper and responsible manner. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video thank you first of all let's start with a question and the question is do you think whenever you have a computer vision model let's say you have trained a deep learning model that can um, classify if the given input image is showcasing a dog or a cat right very simple example and you come up with some performance metrics, you wanna see that, wow, my model is performing very well in test data set. So that means my model performance is good and I can rely on it. Well, the answer is not that really simple. Although your model performance is very good and you check the metrics of your performance, regardless of your model's classification or regression, any type of machine learning task, you still need to make sure that you can interpret the model and make sure how your model is coming up with those predictions. For giving you a very famous example, uh, in literature there is a well-known example of having a machine learning model or deep learning model that can uh, detect uh, a wolf versus husky. And you might test this model with some test images of wolf and husky and you might see that well it seems to be classifying wolf versus husky very well but if you go through the interpretability process which we're gonna do it in this video and figure out how the model detecting husky as a husky you might see that oh the model is actually interpreting the background info 
because usually let's say valve or huskies are coming from these specific uh, geographical locations if they are mostly seen in a snow so maybe your model is biased to detect that animal with considering if there is a snow on background or not or if there is grass in background or not if it's mountain this is just a example of detecting an animal type with the given background which is not really what we we are going to represent to, to our model we want our model to understand the, the characteristics of the appearance of the animal to actually detect what is that animal with the given image instead of focusing on some non-relevant information like the background picture so on and so forth so is there any way that we can detect how my model is interpreting those pixels of my image and which pixels and area my model is focusing more to come up with that predicted value in a computer vision task the answer is yes and this is what we're going to give it a try so for this actually i'm going to use databricks that doesn't mean you have to use databricks i'm just using synapse ml uh, that can be run in any spark environment you can use synapse azure synapse here azure databricks and if you don't know what is synapse ml i created another video which i will add this to the top right of this video check that out this is a library developed by microsoft community to actually have distributed machine learning uh, workflow and there are some contributions uh, with spark synapse ml for responsible ai and interpret ml which we're going to focus on how we can use synapse ml for interpreting computer vision based models for local interpretability um, in a scalable manner because we're going to use a spark so the first thing that you need to do make sure your synapse ml libraries packages are installed in order to do so in databricks by the way i'll add uh, the link of the notebook that i'm running and all the docs so you'll figure out how to install the library stuff but just showing you very quickly um, if I go to compute, this is the cluster I created in Databricks. And if I click on it, you'll see that there's a library Maven type that I have already installed. If you might question how I installed this, so I grabbed this actually coordinate for this Maven um, library from Synapse ML documentation. So how you install it is you just click on install new, you go to Maven, just put the Maven coordinates here, and then click on install, that's it. So I did this, it's installed, and now I can use Synapse ML in Azure Databricks. So going to my notebook, this is the local interpretability using Synapse ML that we're going to have some interpretable outcome for image, image classification model. So here I'm importing the packages needed. So again, this notebook is already available in documentation of Synapse ML. So I'm just executing this and going through that. I'm importing Synapse ML based interpretable ML capabilities that I need to have plus some image based transformations mainly coming from OpenCV and I'll actually go through that how we're using this and why and then the model that we are going to apply this interpretability is an ONNX model which is actually open source so we can figure out and detect if my machine learning model here can detect this object as a violin or the other object as piano let me actually maximize the picture so you'll see that i have piano here and violin and we're gonna see if the model can detect the violin and detect the piano and then we're gonna assess the interpretability that how the model is predicting violin here is it based on the violin or no let's say based on um the carpet on the ground that it is guessing why this is violin which is not really relevant so we want to make sure that's not the case so going back to the code so here again i'm importing the packages and here are some helper functions that are going to go through them why they're here and how they're going to be used for example the first one is just downloading the, just um, making a request to the url the second one is rotating the color we need to sort of rotate the RGB to sort of PGR with the, for the given input for having some featureization process and then here's the place that we're gonna plot super pixels so what are super pixels they are the pixels that we're gonna plot on the image that shows your model is focusing on those parts to detect if that picture is a violin a piano or not and we are setting some thresholds to visualize it better 
and we're going to showcase by green pixels that where the model is paying attention to detect that object in the image. So the first thing is here is a very sample, a very quick image, this sample actually that we plotted of the, the given violin and piano image. That's an open source public data set. So I'm, re I'm reading this using a Spark Grid image and I'm loading this in an image Spark data frame. Then after that, we are going to rotate the image from uh, RGB channels to BGR for visualization using the helper function that I showed you here, which is using the transpose, as you can see. Uh, going back and then after finalizing that rotation then that's the time we want to have the model that we're going to do interpretability on it again this is a ONNX model using that download bytes um, helper function which is a URL re request I am downloading this ResNet based ONNX format machine learning model then I'm doing some featureization and transforming process this image transform is coming from Synapse ML computer vision or CV uh, uh, capability. The input is an image and the output is some sort of features, let's say resizing, cropping, normalizing the channels and scaling the color. And then the final outcome are the features getting out of it. And then for the model by itself, so I have to specify, for example, here are specific configurations needed for inference in this model. Um, you can see, for example, this is the payload model that I have. This is the input of the payload that your ONX model will need. Here I'm specifying that the mini batch size, I'm just giving, let's say, uh, one image, which is this one, actually, to try. And then when I have the model and the configuration for doing the inferencing, plus the featureization step, I can make it as a pipeline, which, hey, do the featureization for me first, and then grab my ONX model with this configuration for inferencing oops, and then fit this to the given image data frame. So now I have a process that can does the prediction for me to, 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 to actually detect there's a violin or piano in the image. So let's keep that in mind and then move on and let's do the prediction, right? So I have the model specified here and you know it's a pipeline with the given image and I am then detecting okay my model is detecting some objects give me the the highest probabilities of the predicted objects and tell me what they are the first two actually the top two highest probability so you can see that my model detected two objects and uh, because these two had the maximum probability among all the predictions so I grabbed two, one of them is actually violin and one of them is piano, which is correct. I have violin and piano as the objects in the given image as we saw, right? And this is the time that I'm going to actually explain how model detected that, that there's a violin in the image and how the model detected there's a piano in the image. This is why we're using the SHAB explainer. So what are fairness, first of all, SHAB kernel, what are the SHAB kernel and kernel weights? how you're detecting those and calculating and how they're helping us to interpret the model. So what we do actually here for this interpretability first, we will start segmenting the given input image. Let me go to the image again. Here we are making multiple clusters out of this image. Let's say, for example, we divide that uh, light part of the image. I think there's a window open as one segment of the image then this violin as one segment the piano as one segment the chair and some different segmentations based on the characteristics of the colors of these pixels so when we have all these segmentations we give these segments separately to the model to see how model gonna predict if it's violin or piano let's say we grab just this part of the image as a segment and then we will give it to the machine learning model to see what is the probability that the model says this part is violin or this part is piano which should be technically low because there's no violin and piano at this specific segment if you follow my pointer as an example and then we will calculate the kernel weight of each segment so what is kernel weight kernel weight you can consider as a distance between that chosen segment or feature from the original one so what we are doing 
let me zoom out a bit and go to the place viewer there you go so i'm calling that image shape object i'm saying that this is the model that i'm going to apply the interpolability and the output column going to be the shapes and the values that i would like to have the input column is the image coming from that image data frame setting some sizes and then the number of the samples that's that can be a threshold and you can see that the featureization samples and segmentations can be computationally expensive that's why this solution is great because you can leverage a spark so that can overcome that only cons that comes with this solution and then what we're going to do we will visualize actually and apply those shape uh, shape values to the final predictions that we got from here so what happened the final outcome is it is giving me 13 features or segments of the given image and we can see the kernel weights coming for each specific segment and we are looking for detecting the maximum uh, kernel weight or sharp values um, from the detected violin output and also the piano one and if we visualize them using the super pixel helper function that we specified on the top you can see that the maximum segment the segmentation of the image that had the maximum weight here was the segment related to the violin by itself so if you plot that you will see that oh okay this is the segmentation that has the had the highest value of the weight and if i plot that that makes sense that's actually showing me that the model really interpreted this part to say that there's a violin here that makes sense how about the piano which is the second one i think this one is the highest value yeah this one i think so if you plot that you will see that well these are the area of interest that my model interpreted with the highest weight to say that there is a piano here so now that is telling me some a better understanding of this specific image that how my model although it's predicting correctly but how it is interpreting the given image based on different segments that is specified in the in the picture and then based on those sharp weights i was able to detect which area of interest my model is focusing more to come up with that predicted value here which is of detecting a violin or a piano and that's all courage doesn't always roar sometimes it's a little whisper that says we will try again tomorrow enjoy your moments my friends and we'll see you next week